Director Gerard Johnstone didn't want Megan to have too much explicit gore, but that doesn't mean his film isn't terrifying. Here's why the PG-13 horror flick about a murderous child robot will still keep you up at night. Spoilers ahead! Johnstone's new film Megan, a violent, wicked, enjoyable hoot of a film, poaches a lot of his images and plot points from films that came before. It bears a strong resemblance to Lars Klevberg's 2019 remake of Child's Play, as well as to Wes Craven's goofy 1986 robo-thriller Deadly Friend. The Megan of the title is a hyper-intelligent robotic child that is being developed as a high-tech prototype toy by the brilliant engineer Gemma. When Gemma loses her sister and brother-in-law in a car accident, she becomes the willing but not really attentive guardian of her nine-year-old niece, Katie. Gemma uses the presence of a child in her home to field test Megan, and the robot quickly becomes a tender, substitute parent for Katie. Naturally, Megan begins taking her task of protecting Katie a little too seriously, and it won't be long before she's melting a nosy neighbor's face off. In a recent interview with Total Film, John Stone explained that his original cut of Megan was rated R by the MPAA, likely for its violence. In the PG-13 rated theatrical cut, one can see where some extra gore might have been included. The face-melting scene, for instance, takes place in a tool shed where Megan uses a high-pressure herbicide sprayer to attack Gemma's horrible neighbor, Celia. Celia is knocked down, and Megan sprays her directly in the face. It appears there might have once been a gorier close-up of Celia's face as her skin loosens and is melted off her skull. Would it have provided a fun, nasty, visceral thrill to watch Celia's face melt off? Perhaps. Gore is not always to be avoided, and there is always going to be a place in cinema for buckets of blood, shock, and quivering human remains. But even so, not seeing the gore, or perhaps seeing just a little, can be more straightforwardly terrifying. The most notable kill in Megan comes when Katie, previously homeschooled, takes a tour of a calming, outdoor private school for troubled kids. During the tour, Katie is targeted by a tall child who aims to hurt other kids. The bully steals Megan and flees into the woods to smash her with a rock. Megan, in a flash, shifts into kill mode and pulls off his ear. You should probably run. There isn't a spray of blood, but Megan does casually flip the ear over her shoulder. She then unhinges her elbows and runs after the now fleeing bully like a tiger, chasing him to a nearby road where he is creamed by a car. The filmmakers could have included a scene where audiences see the child mashed into the front grill of a GMC, but tastefully left it out. Instead, all we see is one of the child's errant shoes skittering along the road after the car. That shoe is far more disturbing than any gore. The sudden absence of a child hits you in the pit of your stomach. The gory approach would have provided a perhaps fun gross-out moment for audiences, but the sudden disappearance makes Megan's actions that much more harrowing. In this case, it's what audiences don't see that makes the scene scary. Megan isn't a purveyor of blood, but a calculating monster who is perfectly willing to take the life of a child. That's a galling enough notion that a violence-led R rating is perhaps unneeded. Director John Stone and screenwriter Akila Cooper wrote Megan to be bitter, violent, catty, sarcastic, and devious, all without too much explicit gore. Additionally, the lack of too much gore helpfully exonerates the character of Gemma. Gemma, in creating Megan, would be legally complicit in her crimes. In looking away from the gore, and also adding scenes where presumed dead characters reappear alive, the film allows Gemma to flee the story without facing arrest. Gemma may have been an irresponsible character at the start of Megan, but she learns and grows into someone a little bit more adult by the end. Forcing her into prison for the crimes of an evil robot child is not the happy ending audiences might want. Because of the circumstances of Megan's murders, Gemma emerges symbolically blameless. If audiences don't see the blood up close, they might be willing to forgive Gemma's Frankensteinian mistake. Gemma and Katie will now attempt to form a more wholesome, complete family unit, and the monster has been vanquished.